Covering almost a third of our planet, forests are an essential resource for water, clean air and food. From the tropical forests of the Amazon and Southeast Asia to the boreal forests of Canada and Northern Eurasia, forests are home to 80% of animal and plant life. They are the lungs of our planet, absorbing carbon and helping fight climate change. But our forests are under threat, and so are the 1.6 billion people who depend on them for their livelihoods. Patrick Dugan has been working in Asia for 30 years, helping forests to regenerate. What you see here is what's left of what was once a beautiful forest after decades and decades of slash and burn, abuse, over-pasturing, bad forest, bad land management. Now, look, hardly anything left. No tree seedlings, hardly even any weed seedlings, just this, this tenacious grass here, it's about the last thing that it grow. It's almost down to the final stage of degradation, bedrock. Even degradation this bad can be reversed. The Philippines government has partnered with the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, or FAO, to employ a method called Assisted Natural Regeneration, or ANR, here on the Bohol Island in the Philippines. The technique is simple and low cost. When a small tree is located, a ring is weeded around it and the surrounding grass is pressed down. Finally, grass is cut away so sunlight can penetrate the area and trees can grow quickly. All these little fellows that are trying to grow get a chance to grow and you can see the result. This is only two years old. And how many species have you got here? All native species. And here are little babies trying to emerge. And this is what this natural regeneration is all about. These things happen. You just help mother nature and they happen. This growth helps mitigate climate change and provides jobs for hundreds of local people like Alberto Padillo. For example, the tropical pandanus plant is used for food as well as to make dozens of household products like these baskets for sale throughout the Philippines. Patrolling the forests is also a key part of the program. Elisio Chavez is part of the patrol squad on the lookout for illegal felling, grazing or fires which can devastate an entire forest. Given the widespread benefits of this project, FAO awarded the Philippine government for its outstanding achievements in restoring forests and changing the way local people think about their home. Across the Pacific, in Manabi province in western Ecuador, attitudes are also changing. The tropical forests that once covered these slopes are now dangerously thin. For years, locals have been cutting down the trees for timber and to make space for grazing and crops. Without the trees to act as an anchor, the soil is washed away by rain, leaving it less fertile and increasing local farmers' poverty levels. In this village, a project run by FAO and funded by Spain involves planting small carob trees. As deforestation is worst in areas where poverty levels are highest, FAO is also working to help increase local incomes. Teaching better farming methods like using the waste from this maize field as fertilizer, which saves money on chemical fertilizer while nourishing the soil. This community has also planted fruit trees. The trees provide food as well as retaining water needed for crops. While it is tropical forests and their biodiversity that attract the majority of international attention, they are not the only forests being threatened. 
In the far north of Asia lie the abundant grasslands of the sweeping Mongolian steppe. But the country also possesses sizable forests. As Mongolia's economy has expanded, its forests have paid the price. Expansion of grazing lands, mining, greater demand for timber and human-sparked fires have all taken their toll on the nation's tree cover. But things are now changing through the efforts of people like Bachigal. His family are herders. Until recently, he could do little but watch as outsiders poached the woodland resources of his valley. Now Bachigal is taking a leading role in protecting them. Batchigal is in charge of a body of ordinary citizens who oversee the community's woodland resources. The group is part of a pilot project operating in five provinces across Mongolia, supported by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization and funded by the Netherlands. User group members receive training on forest assessment, mapping, management planning, fire prevention, and marketing of forest products. Oyentux is a ranger for the group, on the lookout for illegal felling of trees and forest fires. Preservation efforts are showing signs of success. In project areas, illegal logging has essentially ceased. If projects like this can be successfully expanded, then Mongolia can help safeguard the livelihoods of its people and prevent desert sands from lowering air quality across Asia. Elsewhere on the planet, however, preservation efforts didn't come soon enough, and there are few trees left to preserve. Less than 50 years ago, this desert landscape in Senegal was lush savanna. But here, as in much of the Sahel, the 5,000-kilometer belt of land that divides the Sahara Desert from the rest of Africa, trees have been cut down for firewood. This deforestation accompanied by land degradation caused by over-farming and over-grazing, as well as climate change, have turned this once fertile land into desert. A recent project to plant acacia or gum trees is nevertheless attempting to reverse that process of desertification. Acacia is a, a good choice for the project because it is a native tree, so we are not altering biodiversity. It's a tree which has many benefits. It feeds the soil, so it restores its fertility. It is a shelter for crops. Fatou Sey is one of 150 women in this village alone, benefiting from the project. Financed by Italy, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, together with the government of Senegal and five other countries across the region, provided seeds and seedlings and taught the women how to sow and plant the acacia trees, as well as how to extract and market the gum they produce. The gum is brought to this processing plant close to Senegal's capital, Dakar, from where the gum is sold to Europe, the US and elsewhere for uses within the pharmaceutical and food industries. FAO now wants to roll the project out on a wider scale to regreen more of the land bordering the Sahara Desert, keeping the desert sands at bay and providing protection for the millions of vulnerable people living within Africa's drylands.
many countries are winning the battle for their forests, including in many parts of Europe. A good example is Germany, where sustainable forest management has enabled the country to consistently increase its forest cover over the past 40 years. The forest is harvested for timber in a sustainable way. Only as many trees are cut down during the timber harvest as the forest can regenerate. In this way, the timber industry provides jobs, while ensuring the wood it uses is entirely renewable, able to grow and regenerate. Wood offers a greener alternative to other construction materials that are highly reliant on non-renewable fossil fuels for their production. Rangers mark those trees that do not show optimal growth for felling. Das ist unser Zukunftsbaum. Der soll so lange stehen bleiben, bis er etwa 100, 120 Jahre alt ist. Das Ziel von Durchforstung ist, die besten Bäume in ihrer Entwicklung zu fördern und dafür dann die Bäume wegzunehmen, die sie behindern. Das sind solche, die eine schlechte Qualität haben, eine schlechte Vitalität haben und oben im Kronenraum die guten Bäume bedrängen. Similar policies are employed a continent away in the boreal forests of Canada. Canada is home to almost a third of these coniferous forests that extend across much of subarctic North America and Eurasia. Only 0.5% of the forest is harvested annually for timber. The timber and wood pulp industries provide a vital source of jobs and revenue in rural areas. But here, nature itself poses a threat. Natural disturbances such as storms and fire threaten local communities and the economy. But when properly managed, the regenerative properties of fire can be maximized. Late in the autumn, when the risk of wildfire has receded, fires are deliberately lit to remove forests damaged by storms, insects and disease. The prescribed burns leave behind open fertile ground where tree seedlings can grow and a new forest is born. But scientists fear that with climatic changes due to global warming, summers could become longer and warmer and wildfires more frequent, with negative effects for local communities. The size of the threat posed by climate change will itself depend on how well we preserve and restore our forests. We have reports that for the first time, the rate of deforestation is decreasing in many countries around the world. And this is a result of the concerted efforts at local and international levels. We're seeing this happening uh, in Asia in particular as a result of increased resources being given to forest rehabilitation and forest restoration. 2011 was declared the International Year of Forests by the United Nations with special focus on forests for people. This has been a year to celebrate the positive achievements of those who have already begun the work to preserve, restore and sustainably manage our forests. It's also helped highlight how much more still needs to be done at international, regional and local level to ensure a greener, more prosperous future for our planet and its people. <laughs>